I'm, I'm really glad we're doing this together. And uh, how, how did I became, become initiated? Uh, I come from a I come from an upper middle class uh, family in a provincial town in Spain, absolutely foreign to flamenco. Uh, flamenco had, had, had scarcely even, you know, had never been played. At home, I was a, just a normal kid, a 15, 16 year old kid who liked international pop music, like, like everyone I knew. And, but but uh, my my parents got separated. They they got divorced, and we had a, a, a very close. Uh, there was a family we were, who were really close friends uh, with us, and, and the head, the, the father of this family, was a very dear, very dear friend. He was a, a man who I whom I admired a great deal. He was like a second father figure to me. And he, he used to talk a lot about flamenco. And I knew he liked flamenco a great deal. So, so in, in my mind, if, if, if Fidel, if this man is, is so interested in flamenco, there has to be something there. That's what I thought. So I, he, he let me borrow one of his treasured recordings. It was a, a record by a, cant, a, a singer from Jerez de la Frontera, Terremoto de Jerez. And it was, this was hardcore flamenco. Uh, no, how would I put it? It's, it's really traditional, very, very sober, very, mm, very hardcore flamenco. Let's, let's keep it at that. And I started listening to, to that record all the time. I, I, at first, I didn't understand a great deal. Uh, there was something about what I was in, in, in the music I heard and the palmas, the rhythm that I liked and I liked the voice, but I didn't understand a word. I, I was new to the language and didn't make much sense to me. But I, I, I listened to this recording all day long, over and over and over, even while I slept, because I went to bed with those old uh, auto reverse little Walkmans and and played that until you, I ran out of batteries. So, so that thing, that record kept going on and going on while I was sleeping. And, and suddenly I was crazy about flamenco. I just became, you know, crazed about it. And there was a guitar at home. I had somehow managed through friends to learn a, a few basic chords Sorry about that. And uh, so I could play a few basic chords in guitar. And by listening to the, to the record, I, I started also uh, trying to, to catch everything that they, they broadcasted in, in national TV, any, any flamenco show that they, that they broadcasted. And, 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 and so I began starting just by myself you know, using my ear and, and using the videos. And when I, when I realized it, I, I was completely crazy about flamenco. I, I, I couldn't manage to do much more every day. I, was, I became an alien because, uh, because no one I knew, not, certainly none of my friends uh, could understand what it was what I was talking about when, when I talked about flamenco, my, my little brothers ran away from me. And when, when I, you know, I, I tried to chase them with my guitar, listen to this, listen to this. Everybody ran away from me. I became a, a total alien, you know, in my family and in my background, in, in, in my, how do you, in my setting, in my social setting. And, and I took to the streets because I knew there were gypsies in, in Salamanca. Uh, and I, I decided I had to, to meet them, you know, and, and see what, what Flamenco was all about. Because, because for a long time I was, you know, I, I was living with this passion and this 
you know, these infatuations by myself in, at home. And at first it was all recordings and, and media that I could find, you know, in TV, newspapers, anything that could fall into my hands. But very soon it, it, I took to the streets and the main source be, be, uh, became, I know, uh, what I, what, you know, what I, what I could get from my intercourse with, with the people who did flamenco in, in Salamanca, which was 90% uh, gypsies and a few non-gypsy people who also played the guitar. And suddenly I could learn by, by watching them. And sometimes you got a little falseta. Of course, you know, uh, I, that, that search took me to, to a walk in the wild side of, of Salamanca. Uh, to the complete horror of my parents, especially my mother, and and you know, uh, of course that, that that meant for me a, a total, how would I put it, uh, a social journey within my 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 hometown. I I got to know places and people, and backgrounds that that, that I I didn't even know they they were there. You I guess it changed it a great deal. I, for starters, I had to learn the trade, the job, and I I had to learn the a professional perspective, you know, a viewpoint of of the matter. Uh, also, uh, and 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 I'm talking specifically specifically about flamenco dance and the job, uh, the 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 job uh, of uh, uh, a guitarist who plays for dance and for dance companies, which is a totally different world. Uh, flamenco guitar players usually specialize in, in either of uh, three areas. They can focus on, on playing for dance, lo que to llaman tocar para, para bailar, uh, or they they specialize in accompanying singers, or they focus their careers on solo playing, as it were. Uh, and that would that would be, I guess, similar to a to a classical musician. They they have a repertoire and they and they they present they they fight for that. They, you know, they defend that repertoire. Uh, on stage, and that's what they do. So I, I, uh, I traveled, and I became a professional, working for dance for for the dancers, and that that is probably the the most interesting uh, area for a flamenco guitar player because that puts you in contact with many people. It's it, those are the players that that travel most. And so I, you know, I, I had to learn to play, uh, knowing the perspective of the dancers. Of course, playing for dancers, you also play for singers. So that gives you kind of a like, global perspective. You have to, to do three things. And, and of course, you also have to play solos every once in a while because it's demanded from you. And, and, and apart from that, you know, I had to learn the discipline of rehearsing of, of, uh, of uh, I don't know what the word is in English. Uh, in, in Spain, we say componer, compose, uh, you know, to make music uh, fast for, 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 for concrete shows. And the leader of the dance company would tell you, I need a... Uh, two minute introduction to open the show. Uh, here I need this falseta, which is a variation. It's like a guitar solo interspears between uh, singing and dancing. We need uh, this structure. We need to, and, and of course you have to memorize the whole whole shows. Uh, and, 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 and that is the job. Uh, for me, my, the way I see it, my professional career started when I decided to move to Madrid, to Madrid, to the capital. Of course, if, since I since I started playing, uh, 
I, I, I managed to get into the local, the Salamanca's flamenco scene quite easily uh, because I was, uh, I didn't have a too great an ear, uh, but I, I, rhythm was kind of easy for me. And, and flamenco is the great, the, the most difficult aspect of flamenco is probably the rhythm. So by the time I was almost 30, I had already been playing and, and earning money in Salamanca, in, Manho, in my hometown. I, I soon began to be requested to play for this guy, for this guy. I participated in, in various groups, various bands, however you want to call it. So I, I, I knew the basic styles. I, I knew the basic rhythms I, have, I had quite a lot of falsetas, which are, the, which is the, the, the weapons, you know, it's, it's your repertoire, really, the, the, the repertoire that, that the guitarist, uh, the flamenco guitarist has. And, and, and the thing was, uh, suddenly I found myself in a situation which, where, where I didn't feel challenged uh, enough. I wasn't learning much more in my hometown. I wanted to play for for dancing, because somehow I I knew that 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 was where you could grow as a musician, and uh, it took me a long time to to make the decision because I was scared. I thought uh, I, I I always thought I had started late, that my technique was not so great, and uh, Madrid, the, you know, we we saw Madrid like this. Uh, Mecca of flamenco and full of, of wonderful guitar players with incredible technique. So I, you know, I, I was already uh, at the point where, where I thought either I get out of my hometown or I look for a day job, you know, <laughs> as, as Americans say. Right. And I decided to risk it and, and took off for, for, for Madrid and I learned the job. You, Doing it, I was lucky. In, the, in, the, in those times, there was lots of, of work for a, a great demand of, fl of flamenco guitar players, and I, I got lucky. I, I started working from the word go, and and I had the chance to learn the job by by doing it. So Mainly the dance, flamenco dance, that had somehow uh, captured the uh, earned a, a market all through the world. At the time I, I, I got into the job, there had been a very, very clear impact by, by three movies done by Carlos Saura uh, with Antonio Gades. Mm -hmm. uh, Antonio Gades was a very, very important uh, man in, in Spanish dance uh, through the 70s, 80s. But those three movies, Carmen, uh, Bodas de Sangre, El Amor Brujo, had just been released and they had they had created a huge impact all over the world. Prior to that, Gades with his dance company, with his ballet, had already uh, succeeded in, in, in opening up the, the, the greatest theaters, the greatest uh, scenes throughout the world. But those, those three movies became so popular that, that from there on, uh, the, the, you know, uh, there, there was a legion of, of people learning to dance flamenco all over the world. In, in the, and, and suddenly there was a great demand for dance companies, which had dance companies, flamenco dance companies had been touring the world for ages, for a very long time. It, but, but from that moment on, there was like a, a flamenco craze and, and suddenly there was lots of work. And I think it was mainly because of Antonio Gaves' work, you know, they call it nacionalismo, you know, like as a, as a classical music uh, current, with a current within classical music. And Spain had become uh, an international musical theme. You know, it's not only Falla, Albeni, Granados, but also Debussy, the Russian composers. They have their Capricho Español, uh, you know, it, it was already like a musical theme. It, that, that's kind of, the main component would be Spanish popular music, for starters. Of course, Spanish pop popular music 
is uh, is not an, uh, an isolated thing. Many different cultures have have gone through Spain, have established in, themselves in Spain. So uh, we really don't know in, 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 in the singing, for instance, the Arabs were there for eight centuries almost. Of course, when, when, when the Arabs were, uh, were conquered, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't think of, I'm sorry if I don't find appropriate words, but by that time, I, I think when the, when the Arabs were conquered, the, 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 the winners, you know, they, they say history is written by, by the winners. I guess they mostly wiped out any, any trace of, of Arab influence in, in the music. But I, I guess there must, they couldn't wipe it all away. So there must be some Arab influence in the, in the way the, uh, popular music in Spain, the singer sings, you know. Uh, from, from then on, I think the, the, the main ingredients are Spanish popular music, contact with with America because Spain at that time was not only the the peninsular reality but also consisted of huge territories uh, with with very different ethnic backgrounds the afro american is also and and uh, as as recent day investigators proceed with, with their findings, it is ever more clear that, that the Afro influence is, is very strong also in flamenco, especially in, in binary, binary rhythms. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, there's also the, the, the European background. And, and then, the, I, I think those are the materials, the main materials, you know, uh, because, because there's not anything in flamenco musically that is not present in Toccata y Fuga of Sebastian Bach, scarcely mm -hmm. anything. It's a mix of, 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 of all those things. And then in comes the Spanish gypsy mm -hmm. and somehow manages to, to, to give it all, uh, you know, to, to contaminate it all, to, 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 to put his personality to, to to bring his personality in flamenco and transform it somehow, the character, the you know, but uh, from the start, flamenco uh, was was subjected to. I, I, th there's people who even say that flamenco was a reaction. You know, popular Spanish music gave gave birth to a singing and a and a dancing tradition. But it soon began, began to be contaminated by, by French uh, influence in the dancing aspect, you know, all, all the classical, if, if you think of classical dance, uh, all the terminology is French. And the or, and the dan, uh, that kind of thing. And by Italian music, we're talking about second half of the 18th century. And this, and, and this in turn pro provoked the reaction. No, 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 no. We need to, to find our own way of... The, so, so I guess in, in what I'm trying to say is in Flamenco, there, there's always been two tendencies. One, to open it up to a universal dimension closer to a classical music, to a wider spectrum and a very, very local concentrated uh, uh, identity, which has been, uh, which has been deliberately uh, looked for since the start. Because one of the first, uh, we, uh, prior to Flamenco, we had the Escuela Bolera. The Escuela Bolera came as a reaction against those, against those tendencies, those more, more European, with uh, refinements of, of Spanish popular music. Escuela Bolera, in turn, soon began to be contaminated, refined a little bit uh, through those uh, influences, European influences. And flamenco, uh, they say, uh, the, 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 the flamencologists are finding that flamenco well, came as a second reaction in the, in the 19th century 
especially after the French invasion, against that, that opening up, that refinement of, of the cultural, of the musical heritage of the musical mm. patrimonio. So I guess that has, that, that to some extent, that is uh, in, in flamenco theorien a little bit. It's, it, it forms part of, of its intention, of its uh, drive from, from the word go, I should say, maybe. Uh, that really, could be an explanation. As soon as it starts refining itself uh, too much, there's people who say, "No, no, 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 no. We're driving away from from the identity, from the of flamenco art in, in the rhythmic aspect, the ternary. I, I guess you would say in English, three time beat. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, which which coincidentally most of Spanish folk music, folk, popular music, is." Uh, tertiary, all, all over the Iberian Peninsula. We don't find binary until it comes from the contact with, with the American colonies, with the, and, and, and more, more uh, specifically from the African component. And then there's a very interesting uh, thing, because I, I told you there's nothing in flamenco that you cannot find in, in Bach's Toccata and Fuga. Uh, and that is true. Uh, uh, Western music has produced two distinct uh, modes, major and minor. Mm -hmm. And somewhere uh, in the 17th century, I should say 17th, 18th century, uh, the minor mode uh, found that it needed a dominant chord, a, a more, a stronger dominant chord. Uh, to resolve, you know, to give it tension, it to fall onto the minor chord. So they raise that that uh, that G. <laughs> if, if you're in A minor, if you're in A minor, uh, suddenly you you had available a dominant E chord to fall on the A minor. Well, flamenco has decided has produced a different mode. Okay. And, and, and the thing is, uh, for, for instance, in Toccata and Fuga, you always found passages uh, in classical pieces that, um, that uh, rested on that new dominant and produced an A, G, F, E before falling, and that's before, just... before falling, but, but that, that was never the final cadence, you know? It was used to, to give it color to, 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 to make a, a different part, a different motif, a different section of the composition, right? But Flamenco decided that was his, his thing. Okay, so if I understand- So Flamenco about... falls on that E, E seventh chord e? and stays there. And it has made its musical world uh, based on that, on that specific secondary cadence, uh, not, not the main ca cadence originally, but it has decided to live there. So it has, by that doing, it has produced a different sound, a different color, a different mode, one would say. You can find out in, in Toccata and Fuga right. and, and many classical compositions. It was already there. It, 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 it was not invented by, by flamenco players, by, by flamenco musicians, you know? But maybe uh, the flamenco, the flamenco artist, flamenco, pre-flamenco artist found that part of the musical piece more evocative of, because from the word go, uh, flamenco, that, that national identity, aesthetic identity, looked towards Andalusia, the gypsy, the Arab influence. That was what, what, what uh, the, the pre-flamenco, the proto-flamenco artists found as, as, as inspiration, you know? So probably that part of the cadence, that, that particular cadence evoked in them that kind of world, that kind of, you know, pre, uh, you know, that, 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 that world prior to, to the Christian takeover in, in Spain, you know? Right. Like that, that, could be, that could be the answer. I'm speculating here, but I, yeah. but, but it, it, there, there must be something to it. 
because the, of course you can find major mode and minor mode in flamenco, but it's not its main argument. It's it's always the lighter styles that use them, not so flamenco-ish. They're they're not so uh, they, they're not too much. They're not much used by by the hardcore flamenco artists. You know, most of flamenco takes so takes place in in this particular mode. This flamenco mode they call it. Cadencia Andaluza, Andalusian cadence, or Doric cadence, I don't know why. Some people call that mode Phrygian mode nowadays, but it's not exactly a Phrygian mode, you know. It's not, a, it's not exactly a Phrygian mode, because it would be a, a Phrygian uh, with a flat ninth and uh, bemol nueve, bemol Sostenido 13, bemol 9, sostenido 13, and a sharp 13, I don't know, something like that. They call it major Phrygian, they call it two, you know. That 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 dominant chord has has produced a whole world of itself. Right. And that's where flamenco lives. It's, it's labeled labeled popular. Okay. So so I should think uh, that most of it uh, you know, I, I, I had I, I had to work a few, few years ago with a with a Japanese classical guitar musician, uh, and he invited us over to have dinner to discuss the project and, and to see what we were going to do. And he he produced a little booklet, and it was a cancionero salmantino siglo XVIII. It means it was a compilation of. Uh, popular songs from Salamanca, my, my, my home, my hometown, from the 18th century. And I started going through the book and I was amazed because I could find uh, lyrics that are still today sung in flamenco in the most various styles. So I guess, my, my guess is, uh, uh, maybe I'm, you know, uh, this is something not well well known by by uh, researchers i don't know but my main guess would it, it would come from spanish popular music all over spain because you know there was a great connection there's uh, jotas and fandangos that are sung all over spain uh, from asturias from each region has its fandango its jotas but but there's uh, uh, there's songs that you can find being sung uh, and danced in, in northern Spain, also in southern Spain, in Castilla. So I guess that would be the, the main, you know, the, the available uh, body of, of lyrics, of poetry that, that the, the artist, that, that, that was avail available to the artists, you know. So that, I would say that's the main source. And then things that also that came from America, because there was a huge contamination in, for many centuries, there was there was such, you know, many were also written by by fellow singers like Pepe de Lucia, uh, oh, uh -huh. Paco de Lucia's little brother. There has always been in flamenco, but but this is a very recent phenomenon, you know. Uh, for most, for the most part, you know. Uh, a uh, flamenco singer uses traditional material unless he's bringing forth a new recording and he he wants to put something fresh but but it is that is always and and of course there have there have been many singers even so so traditional singers as antonio chocolate who uh, sung their own their own lyrics, made made lots, made uh, you know, uh, composed many many lyrics to 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 perform. It, it, it's not so easy for that to work. <laughs> no. Well, it's I don't know. I, I guess it has to much to do with the gypsies and and, and the way they they are, you know. Uh, there's something uh, a very a, a very old concept in, in Spanish culture culture that uh, in in Goya's time it was the, los majos. Uh, 
in today in Spain we, we would say chuleria. In Cuba, in Cuba they say guaperia. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little bit. It, it, it's it's they're talking about the same thing. It's like a certain uh, defiance in attitude, a certain matter of fact way. Uh, it also has to do with uh, with a close group, you know. It's very hard to define. It's very hard to define. And and and, and flamenco has always, uh, you know, been reduced the, the, the most authentic flamenco has always been uh, situated in the in the lower strata of society you know uh, and and so there's 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 an atmosphere where where alcohol and and is 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 greatly admired and, but but knowing how to carry your alcohol, you know, it's it's a combination. It's a it's a weird thing. It's some sometimes you would find people from an outside viewer would find a a, a little bit of a Sicilian, you know, mafia type uh, uh, atmosphere about the whole thing because it's a closed, uh, you know, it's a closed. Uh, group thing with its uh, rituals with um, very machoist as a matter of fact mm -hmm. not in the profession but in the way the flamenco is expected to to behave a little bit it, this is this is very for me this is very hard to define but when you see it you you recognize what that flamenco atmosphere is is like very very fast very very fast it, it's it's difficult to describe it. No, uh, not show weakness and uh, speed velocity of mind and wit and uh, uh, knowing how to behave in 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 situations where there's terremoto de Jerez because he's the first singer that blew blew my mind you know completely. And then I would have to say Paco de Lucia and Camarón de la Isla, Manolo Caracol, Melchor de Marchena, that we just saw, saw playing for, for Dolores Vargas, and Angelita Vargas, a wonderful uh, gypsy dancer from Sevilla. There's many, I, I, many loved ones, many people who I and in Spain, uh, for since very since a very long time ago, uh, maybe it's the Afrancesados, maybe, maybe maybe since the 18th century, where where the more culture, the Spanish elite, elite, I don't know how elite, elite, elite uh, became uh, concerned uh, or interested in 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 taking Spain a little bit more uh, in, a, in an European path, in a French path, uh, thinking that uh, we were too heavily influenced by Catholic, the Catholic Church and too traditional and too uh, backwards uh, as if compared to Europe. Since that time, I think there has, there has, uh, there has evolved a certain kind of, of Middle class of bourgeoisie, bourgeois. I don't know how you say it. Sorry, yeah. in in Spain, in una burguesia in Spain, that has felt a, a little, a, you could say, a little horror, uh, you know, apprehensive, uh, a little disgusted by its own uh, popular classes. Let's let's put it that way. Hmm. And and this would this pack would include uh, bullfighting, uh, all the these crazy traditions that seem to 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 exist in Spain, of course flamenco, and 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 I think that that still happens today. That that was very noticeable in the generación del 98. In fact, it was Lorca and Falla who who maybe uh, that that was. 
quite exceptional for for so so important intellectuals to 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 make a public defense of flamenco, you know. Because there's and and in of course this is my own personal view, but in in Spain, uh, la riqueza. How would you say that? It's not only money, but money has been concentrated mainly in Madrid. Uh, Catalonia and El País Vasco. Those those were the the places where the the concentration of capital took place in in Spain. And so and 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 and, the, and therefore also this is uh, parts of the country where people are more c cultivated, more European like. If, if 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 you if you want to, if you may. And and probably this happens more in those kinds of places. You know, they, and 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 also. Northern Spain, in general, sees this. Uh, it's kind of far away from 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 this flamenco world, southern flamenco world, close to Africa, close to uh, the Gypsy, the Moor. It's kind of foreign for 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 people maybe coming from northern Spain. So there's a little bit of all that. Mm -hmm. If 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 you no, know, if we can uh, blame Franco for that, because. <laughs> Because the thing is, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, for for whatever reasons, flamenco has become has transcended uh, its folkloric uh, origins, you know, and and it has a a huge it, it had a huge appeal. It has a, a a wider appeal. I don't know if you could do with with flamenco it, what 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 was done with flamenco and its uh, its. Um, such its important role in the media you could have could you have done that with other with regional for instance as we say in spain with regional dances and probably not right. you know there, there there was maybe there was not not much much more that could you know that could uh, Mm, arouse the interest of of the audience everywhere. I I remember uh, my, my mother. She's from Asturias. She's very north, uh, very north, uh, up up in the north of Spain, in the mountains, a very very isolated place. And my mother grew up singing uh, flamenco informed uh, popular music, and and that was the thing. It was it was what what everybody liked. It was not something that that. Of course, people say in, in those times that that was the only thing that was played on in the radio. But I don't know. I think you can own a car, you can own a house. I, I'll concede that. Let, let's let's believe in private property, you know. But I'm not sure if you can own a culture or or you can own a music. I, I find can that that sounds a bit, you know, overstretching the the concept of private property for me. I I can't follow there. So in that in that sense, I think uh, artists are absolutely entitled to do whatever they feel. Because, because of of course they are placing themselves in the public eye and they open themselves up for criticism. Rosalia uh, is being very successful uh, with her career, but she knows perfectly well that she does not get the res any respect from flamenco people. She knows that okay. all too well, because as and that's the second part of 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 the conversation. I concede she has absolutely every right to do whatever she pleases, you know? But but the the the, the dark side, the, 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 the other aspect of, of the same issue is that, and as a Cuban said, one, as a Cuban friend once told me, Bolero, you cannot interpret. And I, I didn't quite understand, but I think what he meant is you cannot fake Bolero. You have to be a specific kind of person. You have to be a bolero person to okay. sing bolero. You cannot sing bolero for for fun after you, mm. while you, at the same time you're singing. You know whatever you know. You have to be a specific. You have to have a specific kind of background to be a specific type of person to have in order to to sing bolero. And I think. The same applies to flamenco. Mm -hmm. You know, there's many people 
uh, everywhere that, that try their hand at flamenco, be it singing, dancing, guitar playing. Well, there, of course, everybody's free to do so. But the truly difficult thing in this business, in this art, is to merit, to, to get their respect from, from the people, from the flamenco lovers, from the artists themselves. And, and these, these artists that you're talking about, uh, they, they are very, I think they're very much aware that they, they don't have that. Yeah. You know, it's it's the it's different because flamenco is very that it has such a local component. You know, although it has a it has an, a universal appeal, but it has a, such a strong local component, so specific. You know, that I've I've, I've heard Rosalia doing uh, some freestyles, some not so very hardcore flamenco styles like uh, milonga, vidalita mitai, uh, <laughs> Japanese slipped uh, vidalita. Uh, these kind of styles that are more not not so rhythmical, not so and and she sounded interesting enough. You know, I thought. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen her trying to improvise some bulerías in a YouTube video at Tablao, eh, Flamenco, El Cordobés in Barcelona. Right. And it, it sounds like, it, 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 it looks like a fake, like, a, like an imitation of flamenco. Pop music has a more definite structure, form, as, as they say, uh, musical form uh, it will have a... A part, B part, and a chorus, a C part, and that's it. And and, and they 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 are recurrent. They 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 happen twice, three times, and then the the, the song is over. You know, whereas flamenco doesn't have a a definite form. You know, uh, a singer and a uh, of of course, uh, if it's dance, uh, it will be. Uh, pre-decided, you know, we, we will decide a, a, a structure and, and that's what we will do. But, but there's no, no repetition. The, so uh, how would I say? There's no, it's a totally different concept that, that for starters, you know? And then, I don't know, it's, it's difficult. And since I'm a musician for me, I, I think I, I would think it always in terms of music. So, so it's a different setting, but uh, I guess I would approach it in a, but, but the thing is, uh, flamenco is, it, it doesn't need to be uh, understandable for a larger audience. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to worry to, to be uh, intelligible for, for, for larger audience, for non non initiated audiences, where whereas pop is the total opposite. Its goal is to be able to be uh, easily identified and and understood and in, interiorized by 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 any type of 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 audience. I guess that would be the the main thing. And and there's also another aspect. Pop you can use as background music to some extent you can dance to it and you can also dance to uh, you can also use it as a background music while you have a conversation with friends etc etc i have a, a friend uh, from from barcelona Chaik, he's a musician living in singapore he doesn't play flamenco but but he likes flamenco and he's interested and he learns a little bit and he says that the problem with flamenco is you cannot use it as a background music you have to listen to it yeah, I am still being able to do some uh, live shows through streaming, but there's no audience. There's no live audience, you know, and you miss everything. Uh, for the audience too, if you see a flamenco show uh, through internet, when, when you see it recorded, it has nothing to do with uh, the experience of, of watching it live. And I you know with first time, I remember when I was, a uh, teenager and I went to Madrid the first few times and, and I managed to get inside of a, a flamenco tablao. And it was, oh, it was even scary, you know, when the, when the dancers came on, on stage 
with their attitudes and 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 the the whole atmosphere of the place it was magic i was i was fascinated i didn't blink uh, for for the two hours of the show it was it was something crazy but if you were to see that same show uh, in a in a video i don't know but but much gets lost much of the of the of the so that that's something i always say that i i, I have I have had this conversation with friends. I'm not too, uh, I'm not too interested in flamenco, especially the dance. I, I don't like it too much, or whatever. Have you said, ever seen it live? And um, do see it live because so so. I guess this takes out everything out of 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 the of the heart of of, of the heart of the artists, not being able to to come in contact with the audience. You know. Uh, I'm still getting the, the chance to to do some shows every once in a while. We don't have an audience, but I have my my companions, my 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 friend artists, and to a degree, we also do it for the sake of each other's uh, appreciation. Mm -hmm. You know, when 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 I go on stage, it's not the the audience that scares me most. What I want to play good for for the sake of 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 my buddies, you know, of, of the dancers, or of, to to deserve their to to earn their respect. That's that's a little bit of my thing. But of course, everything and I'm re really uh, from the artist's point of view, I've gotten used to not there being a, a live audience. It's it's weird, but it's it it, it is so because I've been doing stream shows on streaming for almost i don't know a whole year no 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 it can't not be a whole year but a long time already and and somehow i've managed to get used to it but it's not the same thing not the same thing at all and especially in flamenco where the audience that is also uh, the audience gives you feedback you know they say ole, especially in Spain. In Spain, no, the audience can get really noisy and and you know and and display their love for what you're doing or the absolute loath loathing of, of what you're doing. You can you can see some really funny scenes in, in flamenco shows in 